The SEC vs. Ripple XRP lawsuit is about to come to a settlement. Now guys, this is not clickbait and I'm 100% going to show you the facts in today's video. I'm also going to show you guys the terms of this settlement deal. And of course, this is some breaking news because nobody has seen this before other than me and a few other people, but this hasn't really been released to public yet. It is actually something that is quite hidden. You can do your research. It is public to everybody, but nobody has seen it just because of how in-depth of the research you have to do to find it. Now, this was released, I'd say, you know, only a couple days ago. So it's still quite new. And this is why you might see the market still being down. Nobody knows about this except the very few. And I'm going to be the first one to release it to you guys. So huge news, guys. It's absolutely breaking news. In the next couple minutes, I will show you guys that. But before we jump forward into this, I want to tell you guys a bit of the sources that I looked into to kind of verify how legitimate this document was. Well, by the looks of it, it is quite legitimate as the mediator of that is actually a credible financial slash capital institution. And what they were doing is actually going ahead and trying to get both the SEC and XRP or Ripple to be on board of this settlement you know, deal that provides, you know, a win for both sides or provides an advantage to both sides. Again, the SEC is at a disadvantage, but, you know, getting something is better than losing everything. And the SEC isn't really in that much of a position to really ask for anything because they are, as of now, on the losing end of the table. Now, before we really jump into this settlement deal that I'm talking about, I want to read you guys something or show you guys something more importantly. And this is this tweet right here now it says we are seeing a ton of fun on the potential statement terms thinking that xrp purchases and sales after 12 2020 are security transactions this is not the intent both bitcoin ethereum and xrp would not be subject to the securities law irrespective of when they are bought and sold the 12 2020 day only applies to projects that issue tokens slash coins after that date because they knew they were at risk. The SEC could deem them a security because of the Ripple lawsuit. Hope that clears it up. XRP is not a security and never was or will. Now, for everybody that kind of wants me to simplify this and help you guys understand very quickly and easily, a lot of people have been coming out and saying that with the new securities law that, you know, you're going to be selling a security if you sold any of your crypto or more importantly, XRP after December of 22nd, 2020. Now, this is completely incorrect. Really, the securities law only works on some coins. And on top of that, it only works if you, for example, issue coins. So really, the normal buy and seller is not affected by the securities law. It is the actual foundation of the crypto. So the company that is issuing crypto, if it does end up issuing crypto after the deadline, of December 22nd of 2020, then they can be held responsible and they can't use the excuse that they didn't know that it was a security or not because of this Ripple lawsuit. Now, hopefully that cleared it up for you guys. Again, if you still have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them below. But now for the big golden time where I'm going to re release to you guys, really leak to you guys, because nobody has seen this before, the actual terms of this settlement lawsuit. And yes, again, this is 100% not clickbait. You guys are about to see it for your own eyes. Here it is, guys. Now, of course, it is quite big here, so... I can bring it up and down, but we will stick to the way it is right now. Now, of course, this potential sentiment terms is actually mediated by Vela Hill Capital. Now, if you don't know what this firm is, this is actually a firm that said in the past that XRP could reach all the way for, you know, 30 to 60,000 USD per XRP if it was to be signed by World Banks to be known as the cross-border payment method. Now, of course, this is very good to hear. And on top of that, they are going ahead and setting up these potential settlement terms, talking to both XRP or the Ripple team and the SEC team to try and sort something out, which again is fantastic to hear. But let's real quick look over this actual settlement terms and who benefits out of this settlement. 
So here it is. Here's a deal that could be adopted today if the parties, Congress, and regulatory authorities desire it. Number one, the securities regulation. Going forward from the date the SEC versus Ripple uh, XRP lawsuit was filed by the SEC, which is, of course, December 22nd, 2020, that event constitutes constructive notice that if a issue or use an offer or sale of any digital asset for the purpose of raising proceeds to be used in the issues issuers own enterprise including research development activities related to the evaluation development implementation and adoption of such issuers own new fintech project such instrument would be deemed a security and such instrument will be subject to the u.s federal securities law provided that this determination may become subject to the pierce token safe harbor if adopted by congress the second on the list is that all offers slash and or sales of any digital asset prior to 12 2020 is hereby grandfathered as not constituting securities if the utility and adoption of such digital assets has become substantially pervasive then throughout the united states and or material number of countries outside the united states for example bitcoin ethereum and xrp third irrespective of whether a digital asset is grandfathered pursuant to item two above all digital and assets and transactions are subject to the sec rule 10b-5 codified at 17 cfr 25010b-5 or cftc 180.1 as applicable with respect to any fraudulent misrepresentations or emissions or market manipulation activities the fourth is the escrow option slash governance of monetary policies and this basically says that the distribution escrow holdings to a mutual agreed international governing body to oversee the mandatory or the monetary policy of distributing XRP. All current holders of XRP pro rata, thereby addressing the damages caused to retail XRP holders as a result of the lawsuit or a mutually agreed allocations between one and two above. Or of course, Ripple or a designated affiliate would retain the escrow subject to regulatory oversight by an international governing body. Now, in addition to this, there's also a bunch of hidden texts that offer some more details about this settlement terms. Now, of course, you guys can pause the video or do what you'd like to and zoom in and read it. Feel free to do so. But the gist of it here, guys, is that they've not only just offered within their potential settlement terms an agreement for, you know, the securities regulation moving forward from this lawsuit, like laws and regulations that will be able to, you know, maintain the crypto environment, but they've also offered a a system and a monetary benefit for the real till investors that were affected by this lawsuit. So really what happens here is it's a win-win for every side. The SEC kind of gets its regulation now and it gets its system set up to be able to actually properly and legally sue companies if they are doing something within the SEC's boundaries. This is what this is going to provide while at the same time protecting investors and, you know, crypto utility coins that are purely founded with good intentions and to actually make a change in this world. So again, it is definitely a win-win situation for both Ripple investors, XRP investors, you know, crypto investors, while at the same time it being a win for the SEC. Now, I know as you guys can tell here, there is no timeline for if this lawsuit or if this settlement lawsuit terms is going to be accepted or not. Neither is there a formal answer that we've achieved from one of the SEC officials, still nothing yet. But the fact that this has been released and sent to both, you know, the SEC and the Ripple side. Now, of course, it was sent in a more professional documented version, but the fact that it was sent in general really proves to me that there is potential and that both sides are most likely going to be willing to have a look at it and probably even discuss it. Now, they might make a few minor changes, but the basis of it is right here. And again, it is something that is a win for everybody and should make both sides quite happy. Now, of course, I do look forward to going ahead and hearing what they have to say within regards to this potential settlement terms that there is here. And I'm trying my best to reach out to both, you know, SEC officials and going ahead to the Ripple team, trying to get somebody on to do an interview. And so hopefully we're able to sort this out for you guys. But make sure you guys go ahead and help me out by attracting as many people, sharing this, liking the video, and subscribing to my channel 
the more you guys share this, the more highly likely of a chance that, you know, we're going to get one of these SEC officials or we're going to get one of these Ripple team officials to really hop on and we'll be able to discuss this all. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys did at least learn something from this video. Get excited and I'm really hyped to see where we are going to go from here for both the Ripple and XRP lawsuit. Lots of things going on right now. And hopefully we will get, you know, a significant amount of videos. It has been crazy busy for me, but I'm trying to do my best here. So if you guys do enjoy this video, like I said, smash the like button, comment your thoughts down below. Let me know what you guys think of this potential sentiment terms and subscribe to my channel with your post notifications and I'll see you.